Hello, buddy. Good boy. Hi friends, hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new around here, my name is Jared and in today's video, we're gonna talk about Linux. So Linux is absolutely everywhere. Depending on the source, Linux accounts for nearly 70 to 90% of the world's web servers. So basically, the internet runs on Linux. So stick around, this video will be six steps that will help you master Linux. So by the end of the video, you will know what Linux is, where to get Linux, how to get started, and how to sharpen your skills. Okay, so the first thing we need to talk about is you need to choose the right distro. So Linux is an operating system. It's just like Windows or Mac OS X, but the difference is it's open source. So that means that the core part of Linux, which is called the kernel, is available for anyone to see and modify. There's so many different types of Linux or known as flavors or distributions or distros. This is just a small list of 30 Linux distributions. Some are more user-friendly while others are designed for a specific purposes like security or server management so I would advise you at this point to choose wisely um, and I recommend that if you're just starting off um, just start off on the right foot and choose Ubuntu. Ubuntu is a very popular distro and you'll find millions of videos, blog posts, how-to guides um, there's loads of stuff online that will help you get started. So I'll put some links in the description below that will help you find the places where to go to get Ubuntu and how you can actually get started. So the next thing you need to do is start by learning some basic commands. Simple commands like LS and CD or your tools for navigating around the Linux system. Starting off with simple commands like that will just help you a lot. Once you get started and you're navigating around the terminal, the things will start to become much clearer and you'll naturally just feel more comfortable using Linux. Let me show you some examples. So I have just logged into Ubuntu. I have opened up terminal. The first command I'm going to enter is ls, which is the list command. So that will tell me all of the files and folders that exist in, in this particular folder. If I want to create a new folder, I can use the mkdir command. Let's create a new folder called jared. I'll type in ls again, and then I should be able to see the jared folder. If I want to change directory into that folder, I can use a cd command. Then I can type ls again to see what exists inside that. If I want to create a new file inside that folder, I can use the touch command. And I type ls again and I can see it's there. If I want to go back out and go back to the folder above, I can do cd space dot dot to take me to the directory above. Again, ls will show me the existing files and folders that are there. Another very handy command to know is the man command. So if I wanted to know what, say, the ls command was, I could type in man, ls, and it actually gives me a list of the various instructions, what it is, and all of the different switches that I can use. If I wanted to do another one, say man, mkdir, again, it tells me this is the make directory command. Very, very helpful. If you want to know the name of the user that you're logged in as, you can use a who am I command. If you want to know where you are within the file structure, you can type in pwd, which means print working directory. That tells me that I'm in the home Ubuntu private jared folder. If I do ls again, I can see that file one is the file that we created earlier. If we want to make some changes and add some text to that file, I can use the vi command. Within vi, I press i for insert. I'll just type in some text. Then I can press escape, colon, W for write, Q for quit, and exclamation mark. That will take me back out. So now I type in ls again. You can see it's still there. I want to actually view the changes that I've made. It's a cat file one, and I can see that the text is there. If I want to remove that file and just delete it, I can do rm file one that is now gone if you want to remove the jared folder you just need to go one level back and you would use rm dir jared ls and you can now see that that is gone if at any point i'm having issues with networking or anything like that and i want to check the ip address for my computer which is always a good handy tip to know i can type ipa which tells me my ip address is this and in order to get this screen to be nice and clean, 
we can use the clear command that will take us back to the top. The next thing you need to do is understand file permissions. Linux is all about security and trust me, when you start to install applications you will understand. Therefore you need to understand and you need to know how to read and modify file permissions. This could be an entire video on its own, but I just wanted to include it here just so you have something you can reference. I'm going to put some links in the description below that will help you get started. There's a really good guide on understanding Linux permissions that was created by Free Code Camp, so definitely check that one out. Number four is using package managers. So a Linux package manager is a software tool that will help you install, modify, configure and remove software packages. It just makes the whole process so much easier by automating all those simple installation and like maintenance tasks. There are several package managers available for Linux and the one you're gonna use is gonna be specific for the version of Linux that you're actually using. So some of the most commonly used package managers include the apt, which is the advanced advanced package tool. Um, apt is just commonly used uh, across Debian based distributions like Ubuntu. It uses commands like apt and apt-get and yeah, it helps just uh, to manage packages and all of their dependencies. The other one is yum, which is yellow dog updater modified and it's used on red hat based distributions. So that would be like CentOS and Fedora. So the primary command for that would be yum. Okay, so number five, really, really simple is you need to keep your system updated. So I can't tell you how many times I've actually been using Linux and I've been trying to fix something and a simple update managed to fix all the issues that I had. All you need to do is open up the terminal and type the sudo apt update and the sudo apt upgrade. So let me show you how that works. So when you want to pull down the latest updates, you do the sudo apt update command. What that will do is reach out, check if there's some packages for you to download and then it will download them. The next thing you want to do is put the sudo apt upgrade so that will then go through the upgrade process and do a lot of install so just hit yes depending on when you've actually done this um, it, it can take a little while to actually go through this process okay finally number six don't give up and don't do it alone so I ran into so many problems at the very start whenever I wanted to learn Linux. Sometimes I just wanted to smash my computer against the wall. Um, with that in mind, don't do that. But you can easily join lots of different Linux communities. There are some forums, blogs, social media groups where you can learn and ask questions and just share your knowledge. So keep going, you'll naturally figure out. Um, I'll leave some community links in the description below that really helped me. So there you have it. That is six tips you can follow to master Linux. So thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful. If you liked the video, and then please consider subscribing. If you want more Linux related content, then please let me know in the comments below. And yeah, I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good one.